because he 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 was home for dinner a lot, and then he'd go out afterwards. He'd uh, go I, out I mean, to the wakes. Where did he find the time? I don't know. He was just amazing. When you worked for him, and it wasn't anything he did, except you'd leave at seven o'clock, and you'd see the car still out in front of the city hall. Oh God, I better go up there. He might be looking for me. You know, not that he ran it by fear. It he his work ethic was so great that you figured. I better, I better do something, you know. In the morning, you'd get in there early in the morning. I didn't go down every morning with him, but the mornings I did go down, I mean, you felt guilty if you weren't there at 8.30 in the morning. I had two young kids then, married, two young kids, and my wife said, Bob, do you think we'll get a chance to go to Twin Lakes, you know, up to Wisconsin, sure. you know. I said, let me talk to the boss, you know. I didn't call him the boss, I called him the mayor. And uh, it took me two weeks to build up courage to go down there and ask him. And he said to me, he says, Bob, you've got young kids. You've got to be with them. And by the way, have a dinner on me. Is that right? Yes. Yes. He was just amazing. He was just the most amazing man that, you know, I think what hurt him the most was when they had the riots on the west side. And you talked about the helicopter with Bob Quinn. And he went up and saw that area. He came back, Bernie, and he was in tears. He couldn't believe they were doing that to his city. This was after the King riots? Right. Right. I was in a helicopter that day, too. Were you? Yes. Uh, he, that was, it's, tell me about that. I mean, you, he, you knew, what time did he go up and when he, and. Oh, he, I, you know, it had to be late evening, I think. Because we were, we were working in the office you know, long because we had, you know, we, that's when he had to call in the guard and all that stuff, you yes. know. And uh, it had to be evening, maybe early evening at dusk or something like that. But he came back real quick after he looked at it and he says, it's terrible, terrible. And, it, and, and you could see in his face. I could see in his eyes that he was just, he was so somber. You know, it felt like someone kicked him or something. You know, it was right. just terrible, terrible. And then that summer was the Democratic Convention, mm -hmm. and 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 all that trouble. And you were in the office then, right? I would love you to just just talk about it. As well, I I was on the floor. I was on the floor of the convention, and uh, I think Matt was a delegate, and uh, it bothered him terribly you know, what they were doing, you know, with uh, Abby Hoffman and that group downtown. Yes. And, and uh, he was just upset. That's when he supposedly made or did make the statement about we don't create, you know, the police. Remember the statement? Yeah, he just flubbed the language. He yeah. flubbed the language right. a little bit. And there was a sign at 35th and Ashland, Fasan uh, Flores, that still had a sign in there up till about 10 years ago. We love Mayor Daley for his actions, you know. He was, uh, he was great. And he went on Cronkite during the, I forget what day it was in the convention after all this stuff, and after he supposedly, supposedly called uh, uh, Ribikoff. Yes. You know, I have, I worked with the man for four or five years. I see him come in the store. I the worst I ever heard him say was hell or, or gosh darn or goddamn. That was it. He would never use that profanity. Never. A lot of people say that. Yeah. A lot of never people say would that. do that. Never. Faker is the word they say. Fake, he say. I don't know if he even said faker. He might have said faker in the heat. You know, yeah. I was maybe three or four rows back. You know. But we were all booing Ribikoff, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. um, hadn't there been like a fundraiser the day before that Daly was at that for Ribikoff or? Uh, I don't recall that, Bernie. I don't recall that at um, all. Many people think that that was a the turning point of of his effectiveness as the mayor after the '68 convention because it he took such tremendous negative. Uh, Publicity. Publicity. I don't know if you'd call it the turning point because he came back stronger than ever. Yes, he did. He came back stronger than ever. And I think uh, it probably bothered him a lot, I'm sure. But uh, I don't think it was a turning point. I think 
maybe the turning point was later when he got ill, you know. When his carotid was... Right, right. That's when Tommy came in, Donovan, right around that time. I wasn't there for that. You left again what year? Um, I want to say it was 69. 69. Yeah, around there. Right. And now, Donovan must have came in in 69. Okay. Now, when you were... Uh, uh, so you, you were an administrator. Would you talk about what you did as an administrative assistant for the mayor and when he called on you and what, what, how that worked? Personnel uh, primarily, investigations was a part, uh, ran the hardcore program. He set up a program with uh, a fellow by the name of Tom McInerney was his uh, chief of investigations, he former FBI agent. And we hired as laborers on the sanitation department these hardcore criminals. Not murderers or rapists, but some person that needed a little boost. Yeah. And we'd sit down. In fact, the guy that used to sit down with me and we'd go over their rap sheets to approve these people to work in sanitation was a fellow by the name of Tim Evans, who is now the chief, chief judge. judge. Oh, is worked, that right? He worked for Tom McInerney. And we got to, Tim and I got to be friends. I love Tim Evans. Yeah. I had lunch with him last week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he was a Claude Holman guy. Yes, he was. Fourth Ward guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was one of the programs he started. And then we, uh, we, I'd go see him about promotions, you know, and uh, we had a fellow, oh, Orlando Wilson, took over the police department. Yes. And we had to do a, uh, uh, on most 90% of the personnel hiring, we did a rap sheet on them all and a, and a vote check. And... Uh, to see that they weren't of a different persuasion. And uh, Orlando Wilson brought in a lot of people that I, I'd go down to the mayor and I'd say, hey, he wants to hire this guy, this, this, this guy here. He's a, he was picked up uh, as a known communist, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And he'd laugh and he'd call in and a lot of other things uh, around Personnel, you so know. You do I used to, checks. I used to kind of be a liaison with all the department heads, you know, as to their personnel needs. And I work with guys like Jim Jardine. Now yes. here's a here's a kid from 35th and Low. I got to know Jim Jardine, who they got a beautiful filtration plant named after him. Right. Great commissioner of water. I work with Jimmy McDonough, who would probably be a great guy to talk to because he was uh, he was commissioner of streets and sand. And his predecessor was a guy by the name of Jim Fitzpatrick. Right. When I started there, I think the commissioner was a guy by the name of Lloyd Ramsey. And then, of course, my hero was Eddie Quigley, the voice of the sewers. Yes. He was a grand guy, you know, uh, Eddie Quigley. He, he daily surrounded himself with some pretty darn good people. Well, now, did you, were you his scheduling person too? No, no, no. That was the secretaries who did all the scheduling. And that, let's see, when I started there, who was the, Florence something or other, she was there. Then Judy Pelsman was there for most of, most of my time. And they did the scheduling. And it was a K. Uh, uh, Francis Foster. Francis Foster. Yeah, they said, she, a lot of the political guys said, I can't get past the goalie. It was Francis Foster. <laughs> you had, to, you know, if you wanted to see Daly, you had to go through Francis. You know, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, now you mentioned uh, Tim Evans. How how did Daly work with the with the African American community? Well, I had a lot of dealings with Ralph Metcalf, Claude Holman, uh, Bill Barnett, Second Ward. I came in a little after Dawson, but I had met Bill Dawson. And uh, the West Side Wards, who, let's see, who could I name? Well, 27th was Quigley, 28th was Drought. They were still controlled by white committee men. Yes. And, uh, but it was a great, uh, you know, like I said, once again, where would a kid from 35th Street meet a guy like Ralph Metcalf, Olympic champion? And he was a grand guy to talk to. You know, he'd come up and we'd, talk for a half hour about about things and naturally he was looking to try to help somebody and sure. that type of stuff but he I thought Daly did well with the African community yeah it it 
the neighborhoods were different at that time than mm -hmm. they are today. I mean, they, they were they were segregated, but uh, they were segregated by choice. Right. Often. Right. 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 Uh, neighborhoods, you know, Bridgeport, for example, today. Bridgeport is one of the mo most progressive communities. I mean, they're doing so much building. I think Bridgeport has become the new Southport or something, you know. Except it's hurt the vote total because they're moving in a lot of <laughs> yuppies, as some of the right. guys say. You know, they well, the vote totals for the Democratic Party. Right, the vote yes. totals for the Democratic Party, where right. we we could guarantee on any given general election that you'd get twenty two or twenty three thousand votes. Now I look at the to totals and they're and they're pretty far down. They're you know, in the because teens, aren't the they? control isn't there. You know, the control where you used to do a lot more favors. A lot more favors. Now a person's afraid to talk to a uh, anybody for fear they may get indicted. That's yes. the way things are. Where, you know, let's face it, Bernie, most people came out to vote not because it was their civil duty. They came out because their precinct captain asked them to come out. Because maybe he took care of the kids, putting them through school and getting them a summer job. You know, I don't think you have that anymore that structured type of organization. You probably could count on your hands. You got Lipinski's got a good organization. Banks is probably still, Eddie Burke has got a great organization. But after, after them, even the suburban areas, I mean, there's, there's no uh, structured organization. The structured organization used politics and government intertwined. Right. And h how did that work in, the, in, in the your own words? The whole thing was good government is good politics, you know. Uh, I thought it uh, it was wonderful, you know, the way uh, uh, you'd have, uh, you know, you'd have the precinct leaders, the community leaders out there. You got to work with all the priests and that, and uh, uh, you would, uh, an alderman, I went through two aldermen, and we were open Tuesday and Friday evenings at the 11th Ward office. In Saturday morning and on Tuesday if Bernie Judge who was a precinct captain came in and says I got it I got some terrible curb and gutter problems from Ke on Keeley from 31st to 32nd if you had to come back Friday and the guy says nothing's been done yet on that Keeley project you'd get whistled in from Danaher and say hey pal what's going on here give me some report you know, and then you'd go through the favor file and look up, oh, we got this guy coming. Well, get it done. That was the thing. Same thing with the parish priests. When the parish priest called or the ministers called from the various, you know, you just went out and did it, you know. And that's where I think the cooperation between government and politics was fantastic. You know, and it was great for me because 11th Ward, when I call up as a secretary, when I call up the commissioner of Streets and Sand, you know I was going to get through to them. Yes. <laughs> sure, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Was there like a favor file? I mean, you, you kept a record on people that... Of every precinct. And Daly would come in on Saturday and he said, let me look at the favor file, Bob. And he'd go through and he says, geez, second precinct, time Uzhinsky's precinct. You know, I can still remember the precinct cabins, and this we're talking about 35 years ago, 40 years ago. Better than I knew Lyons Township <laughs> precincts because right. you know we were so active right and daily look at the favor file and say you know Ty Mijinsky isn't bringing any people in you mean you mean there's no numbers there the there's votes no numbers low? no three by five cards in the you know it was a little simple favor file with three by five cards in 72 precincts we had 72 precincts back then